This is Capital Cable TV, C10. Opinions and attitudes expressed by us in our music and lyrics do not represent those of Capital Cable TV. The opinions and attitudes are represented here in their own context. If we offend you in any way, which we might, I recommend that you not listen.
we played the Creed um, for the West Watch Project, and we're really into playing house parties, so if anyone wants us to play a house party, we'll play it. <laughs> For sure. We'll do two sets even. <laughs> and we'll do a 30-minute version of Wild for that in anyone's <laughs> request. And weddings, bar mitzvahs, etc., etc., etc. Funerals, anything. Anything. Funerals. Do you think your appearance has anything to do why you're not quite accepted? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, unfortunately it does, but um, I don't think that should matter whether you're a person or whether you're in a band or what, but um, some people don't see it that way. They judge the book by its cover. And why I figure that's um, a bit on the wrong side. That's for sure. Why would you, why is the hairdo, why is he clothing in the, in the torn t-shirt? This is a hairdo? <laughs> this is this a hairdo. This this is, well, my ancestors are not Indians, but they, but they think that I am. See, I walk down past Boyle Street there, and they go, look at that, you know, and uh, I'd be walking down there. It's just a haircut. Who cares what a person looks like? I'm smarter than anybody, you know? Like, Yeah, it's just more or less a statement saying, um, I don't want to be classified in the same group as a business person. I don't want to be classified in the same group as um, the regular high school student. So this is saying we're a bit differently, and I think my mother did a really good job sewing these ribs into my pants. <laughs> and I want to be the poster boy for Hawaiian Punch. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it. That's my career. Choice. Do you find other people alienate themselves from you because you wear your appearance? Um, I think they're just scared to come up and talk to us just because the way we look. And we're no different than anyone else. Uh, I can be a friendly sort of guy. Does it interfere with your daily life? Like getting a job or what happens? Uh, well, I work full time at Slave Code Department Store where we've got Crisco oil on sale this week. So if anyone wants to come to come down and have a Mazzola party, it's really, really cheap. And they don't seem to mind your uh, Well, they say wear it down a bit. Lately they've been saying uh, something about it, but usually it doesn't affect me. Fifteen years ago it was a hippie thing. And it was the exact same thing except it was long hair and flared pants and love beads. It was no different and they were all standing up for the same thing more or less. Peace and uh, no more wars and no more violence and this and that. But they weren't accepted then either. Are you guys really the angry youth? I've got no outright anger against society. Um, it's a lot deeper. I don't know. It's just, I'm here. I've got to learn to live with this life. Uh, if I didn't want to live, I'd probably be dead like two years ago. So if I obviously hated it, then I wouldn't be here. So I'm here right now, so I, I guess I like this world. Like, are you ang You say you're not angry youth, but you portray the no, image. We're, but, but we're stating, we're stating opinions, and uh, and I think I think we're just trying to cope, and I, th I think we're coping pretty well, and we're just trying to mix in. I wouldn't take our um, message as angry. It's a bit on the negative side, um, but it's not really, let's go all out and kill everybody that's different than us. Um, we just live the way we are. I can't afford clothes. That's my problem. And that's why I'm wearing these rags. Are you trying to give a message to the world with your music? No, because I don't think um, the world will music music's really going to change the world, like it's going to take more than that to change the world. Probably um, a war is going to change the world.
If Edmonton wasn't 10 years behind the rest of the world, we would have a larger audience and we'd be more accepted. If you know what I mean. If you take cities like Vancouver, Winnipeg, Calgary, Toronto, any city in the States, this type of music has a much larger following and it's a way bigger scene. Here it just seems that uh, maybe 10 years from now there will be 300 people coming to see us. Now there's maybe 100, 50 or whatever. Is Whereas in all those cities it's much, much larger. Is it a matter of the public not knowing about the music or knowing about you? I don't know. Is it Partially, just I would think. There's just not enough people in the There's place. just not enough people that are into that type of thing, the they're hardcore. Not, they're not ready for it, I think, to be part of it. What makes them ready? I don't know if they want to accept it or not. I guess they just don't want to accept it or something. I think it's, it's just an obstacle to overcome, and you gotta, and you got to make it grow, right? That's Thanks, what Tom. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, we're, we're more or less just playing for the minority of people that like us, and to me, that was one of the reasons why the band started was... Uh, like I said, there was all these people into uh, fast, aggressive dance music, but there was no band. Like, it, it was pretty ridiculous to go out there and thrash your brains out and do stage dives to try 59. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought, well, we form a band and give these something to talk. Now, give these people something to thrash about. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're supporting the underdog. Explain and that's why thrashing. we only have a following. Thrashing? Yes. Uh, do you want a demo? <laughs> no, no. Or do you just want a, a description? A description and why do people do it? Okay, thra thrashing to me, um, well, some people call it slam dancing. If, if you've seen the Quincy show. Donahue? I think that's where it evolved from. Um, I don't know. It's just dancing rapidly and it's a fast roughhousing the fast music. That's it's a, it's a way of getting your aggression out without uh, taking it out on other people, without using violence or picking fights. Doesn't it start fights? No. It look. It see that that's a problem there too. It looks. It looks like everyone's there to beat up each other, but mainly I know when I'm out there thrashing that I know most of the people on the floor, and so it's just a, a fun sort of thing like a game of piggyback or something. It's just uh, well, you know, it's a lot more exciting than sitting at some place going like this, boom, tsh, boom, boom, tsh. You know, it's, yeah, it's just the same. I mean, it's more more physical body contact and stuff. It's a lot more exciting than, you know, sitting there like trying to pretend that you're John Travolta or something. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot it's more no, it's no, It's no different than jiving to 50s rock and roll yeah. or, or skanking to reggae or whatever you want. You know, every music has their audience. No audience is going to sit and go, watch the band, right? <laughs> and I think it's just... It's just a natural reaction to it. The stage would probably just be an extension of, of where they are, I guess. You know, it's just... That's another difference from heavy metal. If you go to a heavy metal concert, everyone's just sitting in their chairs, just going... And I, I don't really find that enjoyable, personally, just sitting in a chair watching a mm -hmm. band. Unless they're, I know, if they're really hot, you think so. <laughs> but I don't really get into that. That's, it's, that's mostly what it is. It's fun. It's, We're not a uh, heavy political band. Or anything of that sort. Also, you're you're saying that that oh, there's heavy metal and us are so close, but yet you look at us and you can tell the difference. And I don't think we should have to tell people what's so different about us. I think they can just look at us and they can tell. If you yeah, if you <laughs> listen to the music, we sound nothing like a heavy metal band. But if you want to call us a heavy metal band, go ahead. The choice is yours. Well, yeah. We're not hardcore. We're not we're not heavy metal. We're we're S and FU, right? And and we're not we're not we're not labeling us. And I don't want people to label us. Because that just traps you and it confines you, and I don't want that. I'll know we really made it here when I see 300 people at one of our gigs just slamming and having a fun time. And just getting so pissed out of their heads they forget their name. I don't know if uh, any other guys in the band have a different meaning of it. Oh, I was asked. That basically that's sums it up, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's when we can pack the place we play, big or small, and. Uh, Everybody's there and enjoys themselves. Everybody goes out. That's when I would feel that we've succeeded. Yeah, when when people say, "Yeah, I like that band called SNFP." <laughs> we had fun tonight. Guitar playing itself, do you rely on finesse and technical skill, or just all-in-out power? I think I'm more into finesse and stuff like that, and I don't know 
want to that because that's kind of, I'm not really as much into hardcore music as Mark is. That's me more. I'm more into pop stuff. Yeah, he listens to teardrops and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I do like some hardcore. Believe, I don't like as much of it though. Believe it or not. No, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with mixing it. I think mixing it makes it all the better, more enjoyable. You get a more wider audience and it makes it more accessible to people. Sim simplicity is what music is basically. A pop music or rock and roll is about. Yeah. Simplicity is part of it. If you go too far, it's not saying it's just jazz. Yeah, you're putting it you're putting it out of the reach of people, you know. It, but there's nothing wrong with getting complicated also, right? Well it's not as fun to play you know, like, We don't we don't wanna make it so complicated and so people just you know, what are they doing? To me more or less being in the band is more an attitude than anything else because I don't claim myself as being a singer. Um, I'm just up there performing. You don't you don't even have to know how to play your instruments to form a band. And all you have to do is have that spirit and attitude. Say, yeah, we want to, we want to form a band, and that shows something right there. It's better than uh, sitting at home not doing something. It's better than sitting at home complaining that there's nothing to do. That's this way, like we used to sit home and complain that there's nothing to do, but I when we started do. a band, we started a band, and uh, now we've got something to do with our time. How can we write a 30 seconds? How can, how can oh, you write right, 30 seconds? Kind. That's the thing. Throw it to the best kind. Um, hey, let them throw his We have uh, 30 second songs. That's actually our rap. Well, that's around our average time. We're beginning to break uh, an 18 second song into the world right now. But I figure if you can say something in three minutes, you can probably say the same thing in 30 seconds. And this way, you don't have to repeat yourself. But we're not really trying to write three seconds songs. It's just the way they happen to be. Sticks and, <laughs> sticks and stones, more or less, is uh, use against the police. And the general message is there's sort of no use fighting them because all you're going to do is end up getting your head beaten in by a billy club. And that's not worth fighting against the police at all. And that's all sticks and stones is about. The song Monster, what that mainly is about. It's about parents seeing their kid, whether he has really long hair, or whether his hair's spiked up like a pineapple, or, or whatever. Uh, or the parents don't like what he looks like. The parents don't agree with what he has to say. So they feel embarrassed about that, so they hide him from all his friends. So they lock him up in the cellar and treat him like a monster. I don't see where politics come in that at all. So you're talking about social commentary? I wouldn't say social com commentary. It's just more or less experiences. Uh, not our experiences, but I know a lot of a lot of kids that um, just because they look a bit sort of strange, they're alienated from their parents because their parents say, ooh, how can I bring up something as disgusting looking as that? So they say, uh, well, I'm having some friends coming over to play bridge. Why don't you leave the house for a bit?
opinions and attitudes expressed by us in our music and lyrics um, are not really those that... Let's do it over again. The opi okay, <laughs> one more time. These opinions and attitudes are, rep are presented here and there. Let's I'm actually having trouble reading this. To okay, here we go again. Um, the opinions and attitude... <laughs> The opinions and attitudes expressed by us in this uh, take 77, I recommend that you not listen, and I wouldn't if you dare. It's at your own risk, so to speak. <laughs> so, is this going to be the actual take? Hi, Matt, how you doing? Good, John, how are you doing? Good. Hi, Bus.